Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the Easy Peasy Guide for Pandemonium, Asphodelos, the Third Circle, Savage, or better known as P3S. First off, we have our markers set up like this, which will be critical for handling all the mechanics in the fight. And then there's this set of markers, which is exactly the same, but moved forward. And if you want to try it, this is an uptime strap marker position. But for this guide, I'll just reference all the markers in the middle and how to do the mechanics from there. We'll also need two party groups consisting of two tanks and two melees, and two healers and two range. You'll also want to have roughly clock positions as well as friends. The DPS will want to be partners with a tank or a healer. You'll also want to choose left and right groups, consisting of a tank, a healer, and two DPS, for a couple of the mechanics in the fight as well. In other words, there's a lot of positionings for how you handle all of these mechanics, and we'll go over each one of them as we go along. First up, pull the boss into the middle and he'll first cast Scorched Exaltation, which is just a raid-wide AoE. Next up, he'll cast Heat of Condemnation, which will put two tethers on two random party members. These tethers will need to be picked up by the tanks, and you'll also want to take them away from each other and the party. These tethers are really finicky, they'll snap to whoever is around them, so the best thing to do to help out the tanks for the party is just to remain still and let the tanks pick up the tethers. Next up, Phoenix will cast Experimental Fire Plume, which will do one of two things. If it's the giant fireball that shoots up in the air, it will target one party member at random and put a giant fireball AoE on the spot where you just were, so you can bait this mechanic. In our case, we have the whole party start south on the three marker, and then as soon as that fireball shoots up into the air, we all move as a group towards the north. If Phoenix has these little balls that are circling around him, two fire plumes will appear randomly on the outside of the stage, rotate clockwise, and then after they hit four times, an AoE will hit in the middle. Once you see those fire plumes hit on the outside of the stage, you want to run towards the second one that spawns, because by the time you get there, you're going to dodge the fireball that comes from the middle. For these two fireballs, you can use the stage markers to identify where the edge of the AoEs are. For the small one in the middle, it's this circle right here, and if you're standing in the middle and the big one falls down, it's this ring right here. Dodge out to that and you'll always be safe. Right after those fireballs, Phoenix will cast either right cinder wing or left cinder wing. And you guessed it, he'll cast a half room wide AoE on his left or right side. So pay attention to the direction he's facing because sometimes it gets a little wonky here and then move to the side that he's not cleaving. Next up, we get into position for Darkened Fire, which is where we want to get with our partners, either a DPS and a tank or a DPS and a healer. Make sure your party chooses positions on the intercardinals. In our case, it's the letter markers. Once you're in position with your partner, a Darkened Fire will get placed down on where you're standing. The darkened fires should be evenly spread out like this, and you can use these little markers on the stage to position these darkened fires properly. Everyone will then get numbers on their head, and we all go to the numbered markers and set up like this. If you get the numbers 1, 2, 3, or 4, you just go to that corresponding marker. If you get 5, 6, 7, or 8, you also go to your corresponding number, 5 being on 1, 6 on 2, 7 on 3, and 8 on 4. And Square Enix likes to throw a lot of math at us, but if you get the higher number 5 through 8, what you can do is just take your number, minus 4, and then go to that marker, and it all works out. While you have the numbers on your head, everyone will get a pulsing AoE around them. Don't worry, they don't hurt that much and you can heal through it. But what you want to do is you want to overlap these AoEs onto two Darkened Fires on your left and right, when you're standing on your numbered marker. Each Darkened Fire must get hit four times, and if you're all set up correctly, Phoenix will vomit out those AoEs, you'll hit all your Darkened Fires as soon as they're targetable and you can DPS them, DPS them down. Another thing to know is that if you place the Darkened Fires too close together, they'll explode, and if you don't overlap them with your AoEs and they're still invulnerable after everything has gone out, then they'll explode and you'll die. Tank Tethers come out again, so pick those up. The Scorched Exaltation comes out again, which is the raid-wide AoE. And next up, Phoenix will cast Devouring Brand. At this point, our entire party gets on the 3 marker, and then Experimental Fire Plume will go off, which is either the giant fireball or the little fireballs that rotate around the stage. The Devouring Brand is a plus AoE with lava that comes into the middle, and so you want to dodge towards the diagonals, either the upper left or the upper right diagonal. We always go up to the top left as a default, and if it's the giant fireball, we can do that, no problem. 
but if it's the rotating fire AoEs around, we have to look and see where those fireballs hit on the outside and make sure we dodge those. So sometimes we'll run up towards the northeast. Since we always know those fireball AoEs are rotating around the stage clockwise, we can always go to its left side, looking from the inside of the stage towards the outside. How I work it out in my brain is that if I see a fire plume on one of the diagonals that I need to run to, I just go to that one because I know it's going to move clockwise around the stage. Once you dodge to the edge, the plus fire AoEs come into the middle, and at this point, as a party, you want to stack very tight together. AoEs will all appear underneath you. Make sure you're not too close to that plus AoE that's coming into the middle, as they will expand and might clip you with an AoE. As soon as you dodge the AoEs that are underneath you, Phoenix will cast either right or left Cinderwing, so dodge that accordingly. The next thing that comes out will be the tank tethers, so the tanks will need to pick it up again, and for the party, you'll want to sort of maneuver back towards the center, just to give tanks enough space to get those tethers. Immediately after that, there will be an experimental fire plume again, which is either the giant fireball or the rotating fire AoEs around the stage, so dodge those accordingly. Then in a moment, Phoenix will become untargetable, jump up into the air, and then come down on the outside of the stage. Phoenix will then charge through the center of the stage and do one of two things. Depending on which thing he does is dependent on the fire breath that he's casting on his head. If his center head is on fire, then we'll have to get into our left and right groups and spread out like this. Phoenix will charge through the middle, everyone will get an AoE on them, after that come back into the middle. If Phoenix's left and right head both have fire on them, then we call it friends. The DPS will want to stack with their tank or healer partner and get into this configuration. Phoenix will charge right through the middle of the stage with the outside of the stage being covered with AoEs and four AoEs will hit each partner group. The reason why we have the DPS pair with the tank or healer is because the four AoEs just hit either the four DPS or just the tanks and healers. After that, come back into the middle, Phoenix will drop down into the center of the stage, and now you're in the add phase where four birds will spawn on the cardinal directions, about where the markers are. Each tank will want to pick up two birds and drag them out to their corners. At this point, we split up the party into our left and right groups, a tank, a healer, and two DPS for each of these two birds. Each party kills one bird, and then after that first bird dies, the tanks will kite the second bird to the other corner, and then both groups kill their birds there. Pretty much you want to kill these birds away from each other because if they die close to each other, when they resurrect, they're going to wipe the party. After you kill that last bird, guess what? They're back. Phoenix will then explode, resurrecting all the birds again so you have to kill them again. One of our strategies that we do here is that we take one bird and we just go ham on it and we try to kill it before we have to do the tether mechanics that come out next. Once the birds resurrect, each bird will tether to a DPS or tether to a tank or healer and then tether to the person that wasn't tethered to a bird. So four people, either the DPS or the tanks or healers, will get two tethers and four people will just get one. And with the usual tether mechanics, you want to run opposite your tether away from a bird and away from a party member. And if you take a look at this diagram, it shows the rough positions on how to separate yourselves with the tethers. For the folks who get two tethers, once the bird charges towards you, you'll have to sidestep out of the way so you don't get hit with the second charge. In other words, if you have two tethers, you'll always need to sidestep. Once those charges are complete, the tanks will want to pick up their birds again, and it's a repeat of the first time you killed the birds, they're just bigger and meaner and hit harder. Pull them to the corners like you did before, kill one at a time at each corner, after the first one dies, move to the second corner, and kill the last birds there. A couple of things to know about this entire phase is that a fire rain AoE will come down and hit the party periodically, so healers heal up accordingly. You'll also want to save your two minute buffs here for Phoenix and not the adds, but at the same time all the birds have enrages so you kind of have to use your judgment. Maybe Maybe if your DPS is a little bit low, you use your two minutes here, and then it'll be on a weird cycle through the rest of the fight. But if your DPS is good enough, I would suggest hold your two minutes until after all the adds are done, and then use them as soon as Phoenix becomes targetable in a moment. After you get that last bird down, Phoenix will then cast an AoE, so heal up accordingly. There will be sort of a hot minute before the next AoE called Dead Rebirth, which is another hard-hitting AoE. The tank tethers will come out next, so handle those like you did before. After that, Phoenix will cast Fledgling Flight, where four small bird pods will appear on top of four random party members. Each one of these bird pods has an arrow on it, and what you want to do is you want to face it towards the outside of the stage and put them on the cardinal markers. The arrows on the birds don't rotate with your character, so for the positioning, there's only going to be one spot for each bird. After you place your birds, come back into the middle, and all four birds will explode with a cone AoE in the direction 
direction that arrow was facing. Remember this for a later mechanic. Once you're in the middle, stack tightly as Phoenix will cast Experimental Glory Plume. Phoenix will cast two mechanic indicators. The first one is going to be the fire plumes that rotate around the stage and then the one that hits in the middle. You've seen this indicator before with the smaller fireballs that surround Phoenix. The second mechanic indicator are these black balls and it could be either the small black balls that are all surrounding Phoenix or it could be one giant black ball in the middle. These black balls indicate whether your party stacks or they spread out. If it's a giant black ball in the middle of Phoenix that rises up, that's a stack. If it's the smaller black balls surrounding Phoenix, that's a spread. At this point, we all stack in the middle and prepare to go to our left and right party groups, or in this case, north or south. One group goes to the north, while the other group goes towards the south. But since we don't know where the rotating fire plumes will first hit, we assign marker sets to each group to help with our positioning. As a group, run towards that second fire plume that goes off, and then you either stack or spread. Pull Phoenix back to the middle and reorient him for the next major mechanic of this fight, Fountain of Fire. In order to understand this mechanic, let's first look at what the healers have to do, and then, a little later, we'll go over what the DPS and tanks need to do. Two fire fountains will spawn opposite each other at either north or south or east or west. For the healers, you'll want to sort out which fountains you'll be getting. Each healer will take one fountain, and at this point, you want to stand in your fountain before they explode. New fountains will always spawn clockwise from the fountain that you're in, and when each fountain explodes, you'll lose nearly all of your HP. So not only do you have to heal yourself after each fountain explodes, but the rest of the party will also be taking damage from various AoEs and birds throughout the phase. Each healer will take four fountains on their side. For the tanks and DPS, two purple AoEs will appear on two folks at the same time. These can be baited by being the closest to the boss or, for us, just be underneath the boss. The way we keep it organized is that we have the melees go under first, then the ranged DPS, and then the tanks. When you get your purple AoE on you, each DPS will take a different fire fountain and stand right in front about here. When your purple AoEs explode, you'll place down a bird. That bird will have a tether attached to you, and at this point, you'll want to run through the middle to the other side of the boss and turn your tether into the dark purple tethers like you've seen before. Once you're on the other side, you'll see the other bird that your partner put down, and you can stand pretty much next to it. The birds will dash through the middle, and the dash line AoEs the birds created are really skinny, so you shouldn't get hit. You'll also want to be careful as to not run too early after your purple AoE explodes. There may be birds that are dashing through the middle at that time from the other party members, and if you run too early, you might get hit with one of those line AoEs. And let's back up a few moments because once you see the purple AoEs on the first two DPS go out, that's when the next two DPS will go under the boss and bait their purple AoEs. And you do the same thing. Drop your purple AoE in the new fire fountain that spawned, watch out for the bird dashes going through the middle, run to the opposite side, and stand next to your partner's bird. And for tanks, it's a repeat of that same process. After you've finished all that, come back into the middle and Scorched Exaltation will come out next, which is the hard-hitting raid-wide AoE, immediately followed by another Scorched Exaltation, because why not? Right after that, the tank tethers come out again, so handle those as you did before. And then we'll face one of the last big mechanics called Firestorms of Asphodelos. To start us off, the boss will face south, and we have the healers and ranged DPS stack on the face, while the tanks and the melees stack on the butt. Three fire tornadoes will also appear on the stage, and you can ignore these for now, but just take note of their positions. Pizza Slice AoEs will appear on the stage, and this one is easy. You just go to the last Pizza Slice AoE that appears and move into the first AoE Pizza Slice once that disappears. You'll always want to dodge together in your groups because during this dodge, either that giant black ball appears on Phoenix, which is where you have to stack with your group, or the smaller black balls appear surrounding Phoenix where you have to spread out after dodging the AoE Pizza Slices. The Pizza Slice AoEs are random, and so for the spread mechanic, we kind of have our own set positions for our group, melees at the front, range at the back, but you kind of have to wing it, and don't worry, there's plenty of space around to dodge it in time. After the spread or stack, you'll get a second round with the Pizza Slice AoEs. Same as before, but this time there will be tank tethers to pick up in the middle, and we have set positions on where to stand. Each of the fire tornadoes will shoot out a cone AoE, and Phoenix will also shoot out three cone AoEs. Those cone AoEs will always target the closest person to their mechanic, so whoever's closest to the fire tornado or Phoenix, that will be the person that will take the cone AoE. And by now, you guessed it, everyone has to take a cone AoE and point it away from everyone else. 
And by now, there are plenty of other guides out there for the positionings on where to stand, and I'll link some in the description below. But here's our masterpiece for positionings. It doesn't look great, but it got the job done. And this was our older strat, which was a bit inefficient, so here's what we do now. After the spreaders stack, the whole party then gets on the butt for round two of the pizza slices. After you dodge that, two tethers will come out, which the tanks will pick up, and then everyone gets into this position here. One tank will be on the front of the boss, the other tank will be on the butt, and the party will be about here. The tanks will want to be closer to the boss than the party and pop their invulnerability buffs. The party should be at max melee distance, and if your position is precise and accurate, one fire AoE will hit the entire party, while the tanks will bait all the other AoEs. Not only did this strat help out the healers because the party is so close together, it also gave your party more DPS uptime, and if you're spending less time running around to all the different positions, less mistakes are made. Just keep in mind that the tanks will have to have their invulnerability debuffs for this to work, and the positioning is extremely precise. But once you get it, every single time it'll be a breeze. Immediately after that, Phoenix will cast Dark Blazer Twister. One of the fire tornadoes will have a dark tether attached to it. The whole party will want to line up on the left side of this dark tether, looking into the middle of the stage. And we just use this marker as a positioning to line up. Everyone will get an AoE placed underneath their character, and you'll just want to move towards the left, placing the AoEs down as you rotate around the boss. After the fourth AoE, you'll want to get into your two groups, two tanks and two melees, or the two healers and two range DPS, and line up right here on these little squares. The tornado with the dark tether will explode with a knockback, so if you stand on these little squares right here, the group will get knocked back perfectly to the other tornadoes, and you'll be in perfect position for what comes next. Meanwhile, Phoenix will appear those black balls again, either the spread or the stack, and once you get knocked back, the other fire tornadoes cast donut AoEs around them, so you want to be right next to those tornadoes for a moment, wait for those AoEs to go off, then stack with your group or spread out after those donut AoEs go off. Right after you stack or spread, come back into the middle and there will be Scorched Exaltation, which is the raid-wide AoE. Next, Phoenix will cast Death's Toll, which will put debuffs on the party with a counter, either 1, 2, or 4. Fledgling Flight comes out next, which will be the same birds that you saw before, the little bird pods that come down with the arrows on them. But this time, you want to point those arrows in towards the center of the stage, and place those bird pods on the cardinals like this. Those bird pods will soon shoot out a cone AoE towards the direction of their arrows. Our debuffs with the numbers, we have to get hit with that many AoEs coming from these little bird pods. If you have one, you can stand behind any bird like this. If you have two, you'll need to stand on any of the anti-cardinal markers or the diagonals like this. And if you have four, then yours is easy, you're just gonna stand right in the middle. After the birds toss out their cone AoEs, the whole party will be at one health. At this point, you'll have to heal up the party and also mitigate the damage that will be caused by life's agony. For the healers, if you have an Astro in your group, you can use Macrocosmos to heal the party instantly. If you don't have an Astro, word on the street that healing through this mechanic and mitigating life's agony is cancer. So some groups just use their healer LB3 here to top off the whole party. And as always, do whatever works best for your group. Next up will be another experimental glory plume with the giant fireball, which places the giant fireball AoE in the middle. And then you'll see those black balls again, either the giant black ball or the small one where you have to either stack or spread. We have the tanks and melees go north while the range and healers go south. The spread or stack mechanic depends on the black balls you saw, so dodge those accordingly. Phoenix will then jump up and come down again on the outside of the stage, and this is where he'll do the dive bomb through the middle, so you want to watch out for the fires on his head and see if you need to be with your friend partners or standing on the left or right sides of the stage. Devouring Brand comes out next, so treat it just like you did the first one. Stack for glory plumes, move to the safe corner, stack together, everyone gets an AoE under them, so dodge that, and then dodge Cinder Wings as it comes out next. Right after that, there will be two Scorched Exaltations, followed by his Enrage, final Exaltation. And if you have enough DPS, congratulations on your clear! Thank you so much to everyone who's helped us out with this fight. Thank you to Venom for researching this and giving us all the callouts. Thank you to my raid group. Thank you to everyone on Behemoth and everyone that's part of the FC. And especially, I'd like to thank you for sticking around and checking out these guides. Uh, it encourages me to make more. I hope this guide has helped you and your friends get their clears because that's just really why I make these things. So you can have a fun time, get your gear, and challenge the most difficult fights in Final Fantasy. 
I hope you had a lot of fun. So until next time, keep on adventuring. This fight is just searing orange into my eyes. <laughs> Fucking rotisserie chicken. Don't make me laugh. I can't count. I mind if I do. What are you going to do? Do math badly? Maybe. <laughs> oh, imagine not hitting that with your ability. And... Where's the smiley pally? Move in. Oh, Oof. good. See what you've done. <laughs> we right all, we all looked at... Pally's. What happened to you guys? We all looked at Pally's frowny I face. Oh no, we didn't get him. <laughs> okay, okay, we're done. Whoa, oh, my no! no! <laughs> hey, oh, we did know. it. Why are there three people stacked here? I had six. I don't know, what did you have, buddy? I had six. You had three? Me? No, I had six. You don't hear him? He's. <laughs> oh. You both think you had to. Ooh. Kelly, if you had said I had had sex, then we all would have believed you. Yeah, I, I would have been like, I would have been like, what? Really? Let me look at the video. I have six on my head, but. My face might be wrong. But I wanted to saw this word against I might be wrong. I don't know who to believe. Tom. Ah! Is that one of the birds? All over again. I sounded like one of the birds. Friends. Friends. I kind of always go south and then he always comes back. Because south is safe spot. <laughs> That's where I feel most comfortable. I could really go for a salad sandwich right about now. You want a salad? Mm. Have you ever put chips in the sandwich? Like crisps? Oh, yes. Oh, usually. <laughs> An old chip sandwich. Maybe it's a British thing. I think it is, yeah. Amon, like on up, Ali? Oh, I've passed. I've greeted. I've greeted just in case. Venom is it? Sada? Okay, what's this? Not. Oh, not Sada. Sada. <laughs> There's so much panic. <laughs> not the raid, it's giving the gear. I'm going.